Hello mga kawawmat! In this video lesson, we will discuss the introduction to quantitative research. Before we proceed to our discussion, don't forget to like our videos and subscribe na rin kayo. In this video lesson, you are expected to define quantitative research, describe the different characteristics of quantitative research. Yung number 3 and 4 natin that will be discussed on the next video lesson. But this time, in this video lesson, we focus on the definition and characteristics of quantitative research. So first, what is quantitative research? So when you say quantitative research through the use of computational procedures is an objective, methodical, experiential investigation of recognizable phenomena. It is highlighted with numerical analysis of data expecting that the result that can be generalized to some bigger population and describe a particular observation having no biases. So the primary concern of quantitative research is number and its relationship with events. So lahat ng napag-aralan nyo sa statistics and probability, ma-apply natin dito sa quantitative research. So kagaya na lang ng hypothesis testing, using statistical techniques in analyzing data, for example, the relationship of variables, pwede natin gamitin ang scatter diagram, or the different types of correlation, ma-apply nyo dito ang person R. What are the characteristics of quantitative research. So, marami to. Meron tayong 8 characteristics of quantitative research. So, what are those? First, it is objective, not subjective. So, precision and accuracy of measurement and analysis is the target of the concepts. Furthermore, intuition and guesses is not practiced or used in developing conclusion or solution to a problem. So in quantitative research, it put emphasis on proof rather than discovery. Kagaya ng vaccines for COVID-19. Yung mga researchers, bago mabuo yung vaccine na yan, meron silang basis. Hindi lang basta hinulaan. No? Uh, dumaan sila sa mahabang proseso bago nabuo yung vaccines. Another characteristics, research questions are clearly defined. Familiarity of the topic of the research have to be more focused so that it will be clear to the readers and researchers have to be advanced in what he is looking for. Research questions have to be precise and clear for which objective answers are sought. So all phases of the study are carefully designed before data are gathered. A clearly defined research questions consists of all appropriate identification of respondents, interventions along with a comparison variable and outcomes. So halimbawa na lang po ang pag-aaral niya sa COVID-19 vaccines, it should be posed or kailangan bigyan ng attention at consideration ang lahat ng aspeto ng mga researchers before designing the study to ensure that the study design and the data collected are appropriate and sufficient to answer the questions of interest. Lalo na ang pinag-uusapan dito ay ang buhay at kalusugan ng mga tao. For number three, research instrument is clearly structured. The instrument of the study is well organized and planned, and with dif uh, different dimension and scales, it is structured research tools like questionnaires or checklists. So it also enables to gather or collect measurable characteristics of the population like age, gender, educational status, socioeconomic status, number of students, and among others. For number four, numerical presentation of data. So data are organized and presented in the form of numbers and statistics. It is also presented in the form of tables, charts, graphs, and figures that consolidate large number of data to show trends, relationship, or differences among variables. So again, it is presented by tables, charts, and graphs, 
and figures that consolidate large numbers of data. So, dito sa chart natin or dito sa presentation natin, so itong nakikita nyo, this is from the uh, website ng WHO. So, pinapakita dito yung confirmed cases globally. So, lahat ng bansa dito yung involved. So, dito sa dami, of course, kung pagsasamahin natin yung data globally, napakarami yan. So, para maging organized at madaling maintindihan, so pwede tayo gumamit ng tables, graphs, at dito makikita nyo class kung anong buwan mas mataas yung confirmed cases. So, mas madaling intindihan, ah, okay, December 31 or May, uh, or May 31, doon mas lalong tumaas yung mga confirmed cases na sa COVID-19. So, pwede natin gamitin. So, sa pamamagitan ng mga graphs, charts, and tables, mas madali natin maipresent at organize natin maipakita at maipaliwanag yung uh, result ng study natin. Next is large sample size. The greater the sample size, the more reliable data analysis. Yes, tama yun, no? Mas marami tayong number of respondents and participants mas reliable yung result ng study natin. This is to avoid biases on interpreting the results. It also requires normal population distribution curve. A minimum of 20% of the population can be used as respondents of uh, research. Another, for number 6, replicated but not duplicate. Reliable quantitative studies can be replicated or repeated but not duplicated to verify or confirm the correctness of the results in another settings. Validity of the findings may eliminating the possibility of spurious conclusion. So, kagaya na lang, no, in relation sa COVID vaccines. Kung dati, okay, so yung unang study, kung ano yung first dose, dapat yun ang second dose. Ngayon, According sa uh, Yuki study, a mix and match approach to COVID vaccines using different brands for first and second doses appears give good protections against the pandemic virus. So, uh, sa bagong study nila, pwede pala na yung, first, uh, yung second dose mo ay magkaiba dun sa first dose mo. So, meron ng ganyan. Like for example, yung uh, efficacy ng Pfizer and AstraZeneca. So, pwede yan. No? AstraZeneca yung first dose mo, at yung pangalawa mo ay Pfizer. So, pwede rin yun. So, meron tayong tinatawag na continuity. Number seven, data can be used to predict future outcomes or forecasts. Through complex mathematical calculation and with the aid of computers and formulated formulas, scenarios can be predicting future results. So, quantitative forecasting models are used to forecast future data as a function of past data. They are appropriate to use when past numerical data is available and when it is reasonable to assume that some of the patterns in the data are expected to combine into the future. So, the result of the research can be used. And also, this is the last characteristic of quantitative research. Data can be used to verify existing facts and develop new concepts. A research can validate an existing fact. In some cases, research can be used to develop new ideas needed to make life more comfortable. So, napaka-importante ng research sa atin, no? sa buhay natin. Dito, meron tayong mga ginagamit sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay tulad ng sasakyan, cellphone, lalo na ngayon, no? ngayong pande uh, pandemya pa din tayo. Malaking tulong ang pagkakaroon ng cellphone para maituloy natin ang pag-aaral sa, papam sa pamamagitan ng online class. Ilaw, kuryente, mga gamit sa bahay tulad ng refrigerator. So, pag may sobrang pagkain, di na mapapanis, ilalagay mo na lang sa rep, initin mo na lang kinabukasan, mga gamit panluto, meron ngayong bago, yung tinatawag nating air fryer, na kung saan hindi ka nagagamit ng mantika, so healthy, li uh, healthy living tayo. At internet, lalo na yung internet, parang essential na din ito sa buhay natin, needs na siya, kasama na natin sa pang-araw-araw, at marami pang iba. 
So dahil sa pagpuporsige o dahil sa mga researchers natin, maraming napapakinabangang bagay na ginagamit sa ating pang-araw-araw upang maging mabuti at mapadali ang ating mga gawain. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.